Hello and welcome back to another episode of Hollywood Wargaming. Today we are going to be taking a look at the humble Laz Cannon for Warhammer 40... No, I'm just kidding guys. We are getting back into our bolt action unit guide with the medium machine gun team. I believe when we left off we were taking a look at some of the mortars and support weapons, so it's only fitting that we save the best for last, uh, which is the medium machine gun. And without skipping ahead to the end of the video, uh, if you guys know bolt action, you probably know what I mean by that hesitation and why I put off the medium machine gun for so long. While the medium machine gun team isn't exactly the rarest unit to see on the field in bolt action, it is one of the more underwhelming ones. And despite it being almost universally available across most factions, and one of the, generally speaking, core support options of your standard reinforced platoon, or at least perceived to be, you will eventually find that fitting a medium machine gun into your list tends to be a bit of an awkward task. But let's save more of the trash talk for the end and look at the unit profile for the medium machine gun. And first of all, it is going to have its own slot in the reinforced platoon, which is a massive bonus. As we know in bolt action, that standard reinforced platoon is pretty competitive when it comes to fitting units into it. And not having to compete with other support weapons for a spot in your list is something that saves the medium machine gun from just being an absolute dumpster fire of a unit. And it definitely gives it its niche. Now, much like the medium mortar, this is going to be a three-man support weapon, which will be costing 50 points when taken at regular veterancy, and then will give or take 15 points if you want to downgrade it to inexperienced at 35 points, or upgrade it to veteran at 65 points. But 9.99999 times repeating, you are going to be taking this as normal veterancy, though I'm sure there is some mad lad out there who's going to advocate it being run as inexperienced to save those 15 points. And while that isn't a terrible idea, and might work out for you if you're lucky, but the second the opponent looks at it, it's going to be put out of the battle, either through pins or just outright annihilation. And I really think you'd just be flushing 35 points down the toilet, more so than you would with something like an AT rifle, for reasons we will discuss soon. But still, if you were to put a gun to my head and say that you need to make a bolt action reinforced platoon, with either a veteran or inexperienced medium machine gun, I would definitely go with the inexperienced one to save the points, because at 65 points for a veteran medium machine gun team, you are just getting racked. And it's really hard to talk about any of this without addressing the elephant in the room, and that is the points cost of the medium machine gun team, which is really just the Achilles heel of this entire unit, because no matter which way you want to slice it, it's just an overpriced machine gun, so there's really no reason to run it as a veteran and make it even more overcosted than it already is. So for 50 points, you are going to be getting a three-man unit. It will, of course, be firing a medium machine gun, which is going to be five shots at 36 inches. No penetration value whatsoever, meaning it can only harm up to soft skin vehicles. And it will have the fixed and team keywords. Fixed meaning it does have a 90 degree firing arc. Hope you guys brought your protractors. And an advance order will allow you to pivot and shoot, but not move and shoot. While a run order will allow you to run your full 12 inches if you need to relocate. And of course the team keyword means that if you are down to one model left operating the weapon, i.e. no loaders, you will be suffering an additional minus one to hit to represent the last operator being overburdened with no assistance left. So yeah, overall a pretty basic profile here. It's pretty much just a machine gun and three guys. And when you consider that three infantry models in a squad and a light machine gun, which has one less shot, is 50 points, it kind of sounds like a bit of a bargain. But in some ways it's also kind of not. Let's go ahead and pick out those three squad members out of a regular infantry squad, which will be a light machine gunner, his loader, and then also a rifleman. And that third guy with a rifle is going to get you up to five shots again, albeit one of them isn't going to be at 36 inches. But you're also not having to deal with the fixed keyword either. Also, that light machine gun can also advance and fire. It doesn't have to choose between staying still or moving. It can do a little bit of both, and that mobility goes a really long way in winning you battles. But really this isn't a fair comparison because you're never going to be running a light machine gun team and one rifleman. They will always be in a squad, usually of at least five. So that means if you want to run an infantry squad as a light machine gun fire team, you will be paying 70 points instead of 50. But guess what, now we're into the territory of the wargaming strategy known as a blade of wounds. That machine gun, whether you want to look at it as the medium machine gun in the team or the light machine gun in the squad, is costing you 20 points, just for the gun itself, not the gunner. 
If you want to count the gunner, it's a total of 30 points. So that is one 30 point model who, of course, in bolt action only has one wound, meaning one, I was about to say failed armor save, but one successful wound is going to kill him. He's dead. Over 30 points deleted off the board immediately. So to keep that machine gun rattling away, sometimes it's nice to have more and more bodies lumped around it. That way those honorable heroes can jump on top of the grenade or catch the incoming bullet. And of course, you as the commander is going to keep that expensive machine gunner alive as long as you can. In fact, the machine gunner is usually the last man standing of every heavy casualty squad in bolt action, with even the NCOs with some machine guns dying before them. There's also many other things to consider, such as melee combat, where more bodies equals better, going down, receiving hits from explosives, all of which those five-man light machine gun fire support squads come out on top above the medium machine gun team. Also, it's worth noting that significant hits from weapons like sniper rifles will automatically destroy the machine gun and immediately disperse of the squad, resulting in a pretty fat insta-kill and a full wipe of one of your dice in your dice bag. Something that, again, that five-man fire support squad does not suffer from. And before I say this next part, I really want to preface that I do love bolt action, and I really like the rules and how simple they are. But if you really want to find a specific unit in the game that highlights the short-sightedness of how some of the stuff in bolt action is written, I think the medium machine gun is a top contender for that slot. They very clearly just said, how much does an infantry model cost? Okay, 10 points per model. How much does a machine gun cost? Okay, 20 points per model. Okay, it has some additional rules with maneuverability, uh, but it has one extra shot. So, fair and square, right? Well, unfortunately for the medium machine gun team, not really. It feels almost as if they wrote the rules for a medium machine gun and points cost early on before they introduced other special rules and wrote other units and then never went back to revisit it. And they also seem to really not appreciate how important movement is on a 6x4 table in a match that usually only lasts 5 turns. So ultimately with the medium machine gun team, you are paying big machine gun points for a unit that is very flimsy and rather immobile, which of course, by the way, I forgot to mention, will make it a prime target for mortars also. And meanwhile, the squad based light machine gun is pretty much just all around a better buy and you're really not even missing out on that fifth shot if that third rifleman is there firing also. So with all that considered, I think you guys can understand why I'm very bleh on this unit. And I think most players in bolt action agree with me here. But, Hollywood, you say, you did mention that it's not the rarest unit to see on the tabletop. And that is true, because it's not a totally worthless support weapon. Five shots at 36 inches is pretty much just a pin. 50 points and you get one extra dice in the bag, and you put one pin marker onto an infantry unit each round. That's pretty much it. That's what you're paying for. And when you have an infantry unit fire at a squad, put one pin on, and then a 50-point medium machine gun follows up with it and puts a second one on, then you're really starting to look at an enemy unit who is risking to potentially fail their activation. And in some people's eyes, that is simply better than buying something like a sniper who is only one shot, high risk reward, or something like an AT rifle, which is cheaper but may do nothing the whole game other than just be the extra dice in your activation bag. And this reason here is why I would say run this as a normal rather than inexperienced. Because you definitely can get some utility out of a medium machine gun. It's not the most points efficient. But if you decide to take a medium machine gun and run it as inexperienced, I feel like you are giving yourself out of the one advantage that this unit does have. And that's putting out potential extra pins. That minus one to hit that inexperienced units have is really going to diminish your chances of getting a pin out with just five shots. And they will crumble at the first sign of retaliation. So if you are considering running these guys as inexperienced for a cheap activation dice, I guess you could do it. I'm definitely more on team AT rifle in that scenario from my experience. However, there is one caveat that may make inexperience more viable. And that is if you are playing them as German as this will benefit from the Hitler's Buzzsaw special rule, and that will up your medium machine gun fire from five dice up to six dice, which on a D6 system is gonna give you some really clean cut statistics, and it is gonna help mitigate that minus one to hit if you are running them as inexperienced. But ultimately, I think that strategy is gonna heavily rely on your ability to kite your opponents, keep them out of that 24 inch range, but within 36, and definitely keep the pressure on the opponent so their fire is directed elsewhere and not on your three-man medium machine gun squad. In fact, I think that stands for any medium machine gun, whether you're running it as inexperienced or not. 
And going back to griping about bolt actions rules, I really think, and I've said this many times in my playgroup, I think that the small squad special rule, the one that gives you a minus one to hit from incoming fire, should increase to benefits three man squads rather than just two. It would make units like medium machine guns way more viable by just giving that little extra oomph and durability. However, there is one more niche scenario that does work out in the medium machine gun's favor, and that is with the ambush order. Now, ambush is a rather tricky mechanic and bolt action to work out and actually make work in your favor. Most of the time, it ends up being a kind of, I don't know what to do with this unit right now, so I'm going to put it in ambush, or something you throw on ridiculously long-range weapons like anti-tank gun teams to overwatch against advancing vehicles. But for most other units in bolt action, you're already going to have your target. You're either going to be maneuvering to get objectives, or you're going to be engaging your enemy outright. So ambush kind of just falls by the wayside as this kind of sidelined mechanic. But a good commander will not forget about this mechanic and will make use of it in the scenarios where it does shine. And when it comes to thematically sending up a hail of bullets to go flying at an advancing enemy and put them in the dirt, there is no better unit than the medium machine gun for that. They already lack a lot of mobility and therefore are not going to be running around the battlefield. And having them set up in basically overwatch while your other units move up the board. And if your opponent doesn't want to make a bold move and trigger that ambush, they may be receiving an unwanted pin marker from your medium machine gun, which could bog down their next attack or cause problems for their next activation. A moment ago, I also mentioned that ambush is popular for things like AT guns who want to cover firing arcs and prevent vehicles from popping out and putting the push on your forces. And while the medium machine gun has no penetration value, it can still destroy soft skin vehicles. So trucks blitzing up the board will be very wary of a medium machine gun sitting in ambush, and it does have a somewhat decent chance of destroying it. Yes, it's not guaranteed, and it's definitely not the best thing to keep enemy jeeps from blitzing up your line, but it's nothing to scoff at, and it's also really, really thematically fun imagining a jeep screaming around a corner, only to be lit up by a hail of machine gun bullets from a team waiting in ambush. Still, being a unit in bolt action that's perfectly fit for the ambush order isn't really a big compliment if you actually think about it. Yes, it's very fun and thematic to think about, but it's definitely playing on the back foot, and I will go as far to say that it's definitely not a game-winning strategy or anything to build a list around. Because guess what, that five-man fire team with the light machine gun, they can take ambush orders too if they don't have anything better to do. Now, before closing out this video, we are going to take a look at some funkier options that, of course, our mad lads to the east, the Japanese, bring to the table. And at this point, I think I want to emphasize that this is based on medium machine gun teams, i.e. infantry carrying medium machine guns, not medium machine guns on vehicles, if you are a new player listening to this. MMGs on vehicles are pretty much universally great. The problems are solely with the weapons teams. But moving on to our niche Japanese machine gun variants, we are first up going to have the Imperial Japanese Army machine gun section. And this will be a 4 to 11 man squad that basically acts as a normal rifleman squad, albeit with a 3 man MMG team embedded inside it. It does slot into the machine gun section of your reinforced platoon, and it can be run as inexperienced, regular, and veteran. Now, the machine gun itself has the same fixed and team special rules as the standard machine gun. However, it does also have the overman team special rule. And this basically means that every single one of those extra guys who isn't the machine gunner is going to count as a potential loader. And you will only need two loaders or assistants to operate the machine gun and any extra body after that. So basically any extra men after the first three will just act as normal riflemen. This includes the NCO. So you can basically have a giant medium machine gun team that has a ton of extra ablative wounds and definitely makes it a lot more interesting of a unit. Now, personally, I have been on the receiving side of these. They're not that threatening because, again, that medium machine gun is a more stationary weapon and this giant squad is just an absolute treat for your high explosives to vaporize. And I still think the light machine gun teams, which just has one less shot, but a lot more mobility, is simply the better option. Especially when you consider that they can get some machine guns in there alongside them, unlike this machine gun section. But let's say you filled out all of your infantry slots with bamboo spearmen. Uh, you can throw a giant squad of regular riflemen with a machine gun in here in your machine gun slot in the reinforced platoon. So it's fun. It's a really cool thematic, unique thing to the Japanese but it's definitely not 
the most competitive. It's not the fix to medium machine guns. Though in some ways I do think it is a little bit better than your standard medium machine gun weapon team. And overall, if I was a Japanese player, I would probably be running a five-man IJA machine gun section, as that is going to give you some extra ablative wounds, but also not make you the juiciest HE target on this side of the Pacific Ocean. And also, if you really think about it, if you're getting up into a 12-man squad and you're paying those extra points, what is that single extra dice of the MMG over the LMG even worth? Really not much at all. And then we're pretty much just back to where we were, with the LMG being better than the MMG. But last up here, we are going to have another one of the famous Japanese mad lads. You know the type, the guy to just kind of grab a machine gun and go out in the jungle by himself and just sit there and, uh, you know, wait for uh, 500 USGIs to come marching by. And this is going to be the Japanese lone sniper armed with a light machine gun. And yes, I know this is a video about medium machine guns, and I'm talking about a light machine gun now, but I really don't know where else to talk about it. And he kind of operates in the same manner you would use a medium machine gun team. So I figured it's pretty fitting to talk about it here. So basically, this is a single model who usually is a sniper, but he can be given a light machine gun for 10 points, meaning he will come in at 65 points regular and 82 points as veteran, which is definitely a bit on the expensive side. Now, this lone sniper with a light machine gun will, of course, be having four shots at 36 inches, but he will also have the special rule known as Bold Attacker, and also the Sniper LMG and Lone Sniper rule. Now, Lone Sniper and Sniper LMG are pretty much the exact same rule for the two different weapons he can equip, and they basically mean that because he does not have a spotter with him or a loader, he will constantly suffer minus one to hit, static, which honestly is a pretty huge drawback at just four shots. However, it is slightly remedied with Bold Attacker, which will ignore his first pin marker assigned to him, if he's lucky enough to live through it. And note that this doesn't just apply to his minus one to hit that he would usually receive from having a pin, but also activating with said pin. And being just one model, he is going to benefit from the minus one to hit from incoming fire, thanks to the small team special rule. So overall, we do have two really good special rules working out in this guy's favor, ignoring your first pin and then also receiving less incoming fire, thanks to small team. However, that is all counterbalanced by that lone sniper keyword, meaning you have that minus one to hit on the LMG, which again is just four shots, not five. But ultimately, what really does this model in, in my opinion, is the points cost at 65 points for regular. You're just simply not fixing the problems that the medium machine gun has. And while I am tempted to say that this is a better unit for that ambush roll, it simply isn't at 15 points more. So yeah, Japanese options. Funky, different, but not really any more viable. So overall, medium machine guns are a unit that is just kind of left in the dust. They're not unusable, but it doesn't really make sense to take them. There's definitely those people out there who hate the swinginess of snipers, who can't bring themselves to bring something like an AT gun, and therefore will often go to the medium machine gun team when they need to fill out that slot in their list. But I think at 50 points, even those people with that preference are going to be writing their list so they don't have to include that medium machine gun to begin with. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. As you can tell, I'm pretty down on the MMG. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree with my assessment. Are you one of those LMG players, or are you on team AT rifle? Oh, and if you're a newer player and you're wondering why I've been comparing the MMG to something like a AT rifle or a sniper this whole time, and you're wondering if you should take a mortar, yes, take the mortar. Go watch my medium mortar video. The MMG and its comparatives are things that are in the I don't know what else I can cram into my list category. Well, the medium mortar is in this is the first thing I'm putting in my list usually. But that is all for the video here. As always, until next time, guys, take care.